Welcome to the Rise to the Challenge podcast. Joined today, she's a recording artist, songwriter, and model. It's Kel Adore. How are you doing today, Kel? Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm doing well. How are you? Doing good. We're so excited to have you on the show to talk about your rise to the challenge. What we like to do with all of our guests is go right to the beginning. Talk about where you're from and what were you involved in growing up? Okay, yeah, great place to start right from the beginning. Um, so I grew up moving around the Rocky Mountain area, mainly around Denver, Colorado. So I claim that as home. Um, you know, I've been in some other places, but it was really formative for me, you know, moving around every few years, going to different schools. And, you know, from a young age, I had to really find my voice and, and figure out who I was. And, you know, when you're the new kid, you have an opportunity to just kind of start over and reshape your identity. So it really forced me to kind of from a young age, figure out, you know, who I am and just um, really bloom where I was planted. So Denver is where my heart and soul is, um, but currently I'm based in Los Angeles, California. Moving around, was it hot? You talked about finding that voice. And if there's someone that's listening and they're going through that journey, what's something you would tell them that maybe you wish you told yourself moving to mm. all those different places? Yeah, yeah. You know, I think let yourself grieve, let yourself be sad. You know, it's hard. It's not easy. But also, I would say, um, you know, learn to, to be open to the new opportunities. And I, I think that there were times where I would kind of hold on to my old friends or my old school and, and it made it really hard to kind of blossom where I was. So, you know, feel your feelings, but be, be open to that new experience. And, and I wish I had learned that a little bit sooner. When you went to those different schools, where is it hard to become friends with them? Because maybe in your mind, you were like, oh, I could be moving soon, or I don't know what's <laughs> next for me. And how does that build a relationship and a friendship with those individuals? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because um, one of my top strengths there, there's this assessment called the Clifton Strengths Finder and my top one is woo which stands for winning others over <laughs> and you know I, I think moving around it really challenged me and forced me to learn to you know get to know people um, but with that strength there's also the other side which is um, sometimes I need help going a little bit deeper so moving around like helped me meet people at a broad level but then you know I, I don't really have those friendships from when I was a kid that maintained you know some people are like best friends with their second grade best friend and I, I don't have that so I think for me, you know, it, it definitely was good to help me learn how to meet new people. But, um, you know, now, now I have to work on going deep and kind of maintaining and building those relationships. I think I doing that kind of remembering the people I talked to even through up to high school. And I'm like, after high school, it kind of <laughs> stopped talking to those people and you would try to interact with them. But I think it's just it's the difference of time. You like everyone goes their separate ways and then you're finding new people that are making a bigger impact in your life. Did you have anything that you kind of fought, fell in love with, like a passion or like an interest in a way? For me, that would be songwriting. I mean, ever since I can remember, I was writing little bops or, you know, dumb little songs. Actually, my first song lyric was, I don't want to be one. I don't want to be two. I want to grow up and be with you because I thought it was like, if you were one and two years old, you were a baby <laughs> and that was young, but like, you know, that's, I, I was really little thinking, Oh, I'm growing up. Um, so definitely I think, you know, that, that passion really started at an early age of just making up little songs as I was doing things. And that's really evolved to the level that I'm at today. Growing up, what kind of music were you into and who were your music inspirations or idols? We listened to a lot of Shania Twain in my house. And, you know, I don't do country now, but I think country is a really good example of just storytelling and, um, you know, just the lyricism that country has to offer is really beautiful. So I really think I was influenced by, you know, some of those things, um, like I said, with Shania Twain. Um, but also that kind of then evolved later into more of the pop era, like Katy Perry and, and, you know, Taylor Swift and just all of those lovely, like powerhouse women. So 
just, uh, yeah, a, a lot of different influences, I would say. And now it's really evolved into, um, you know, Julia Michaels, John Belly, and people that are really authentic and raw and just um, really upfront. So it spans a lot of different things. I'm definitely not the person that has the one diehard um, person that I look up to, but I, I pull from a lot of different areas. Is there a song from any of those individuals that kind of played a big part in you? Like this, I can resonate to that oh, song. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. Um, Maybe IDK by John Bellion. That song was so eye-opening for me. I mean, it, it just kind of put words and sounds to things inside of me that I didn't know were there about just kind of accepting that it's okay to not know. I think I grew up in a very kind of black and white mindset where I personally was like, just, you know, I, I thought I knew everything. And as I, you know, grew up and became an adult, um, I started to realize, wow, I, I don't have all the answers. And that song, it's one of those songs like, man, I wish I had written it because it's just really honest and really vulnerable. And I love that. Do you think if you didn't hear that song, maybe certain things in your life would be maybe a little different or that kind of made a big impact where you kind of had those outlooks on certain things? Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember listening to a lot of John Bellion at the time. And I think like, it kind of gave me permission to just accept certain parts of myself and just certain things of myself and, and explore some of those questions about my humanity and my spirituality and, and who I am. And so now, you know, I, I take those inspirations even from that song specifically to be like how can I do this for my fans and for my listeners when they hear my music you know is it encouraging them to reflect deeply on who they are is it kind of a vessel for them to explore themselves and I really hope to go deep with my listeners as you were growing up did you have that dream job was it going to be music or was there a different path in set for you so I, as I said earlier, you know, wrote songs from day one. I definitely had that kind of performer, singer, songwriter spark in me. And when I was a kid, I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a rock star. Um, but the older I got, I, I also have a love and passion for business. And I kind of was like, okay, I could go this music route or this business route. And my dad is a very successful businessman. So I ended up kind of getting away from music for a little bit. And I ended up um, going to college and studying economics, kind of getting like your standard corporate job and just kind of going down that path. But I did find myself, you know, as I was commuting to work, I was just like listening to music and feeling like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. Like my soul is just dying to make music and so you know it was then after a, a little bit of a detour that I came back to music and realized like this is kind of my calling in life like I've got to be doing this was there ever worried that if you kind of told your dad I want to do music maybe I should go that route because sometimes colleges nowadays are <laughs> ex exploding the music industry with kind of yeah what they're able to do but was it more kind of making sure that he approved what I was doing instead of maybe going against what he was wanting? That's a good question. You know, I'm so, so blessed that my family has been very supportive. Um, I don't think it was as much of like a seeking approval. I think it was just, I didn't know anything about the music industry. I even still, I feel like I'm <laughs> constantly learning. You know, I, I wasn't surrounded by the music industry going up. I, I was surrounded by business. And so I think for me, it was more about like what I knew and what I thought could bring me, you know, practical success in my yeah. life and, and stability. And as I went down that path and realized it wasn't exactly fulfilling, I was like, okay, now I've, I'm taking a big step into the dark. Like, I know nothing about this. My family, like no one in my family knows anything about this. And so it was more of that just personal leap of faith to do what it takes to learn and to just jump in. I think a lot of people kind of went in through similar shoes where they want to go that business route because they're like, that's like a safety net in a way, or that's like a, I can venture out into any different area, but it's mm -hmm. like, 
are you really passionate about it? And you mentioned economics, which for me, I was a business major and economics was like, get me away <laughs> from that. What, did you enjoy learning about it? Because you talked about liking the business world or wanting to go in that way. You know, yeah, yeah. That's a good question. And I think I'm just like, I don't know. I think I just love a challenge. I mean, talk about rise to the challenge. You know, um, I took my first economics course and I almost failed it. I did <laughs> not succeed. And I just, I was not good at it. And frankly, it, it was kind of a weeder course. So it was designed to be that way. And I took my final and I like, like I said, did not do well. Um, but then after like a month or so, I just couldn't stop thinking about the applications of it and just how interesting it was. And so I just decided to change my major. And I was like, you know what? This is not going to be easy for me, but I know it will help me grow. And I am interested enough in it that if I apply myself, then I can do it. And so, yeah, I definitely picked one of the most challenging majors personally. I'm, I'm not even like a math person, but there's so <laughs> much math in economics. And I'm really glad I did it. You know, it, it was funny. I would be in classes with tons of students who were quite literally geniuses. Like this stuff came so naturally to them. And I would be one of maybe three women in the class as well. Um, but I, I did kind of learn to just work hard, but also I think, you know, work some of my charm <laughs> when my professor's over and, and, you know, as long as they knew me and knew I was trying, like they were willing to help and willing to work with me. Um, so yeah, I, I still look back and like, I can't believe I did that. Sometimes. <laughs> Looking back, is there any business course like you wish you had the opportunity to try maybe, maybe that could have helped pursue you towards that business route. Cause I always look back at, is there a course that I could have taken that was like, oh, this could take me in a whole different direction. Yeah. Um, you know, I wish I had taken more music business courses. I wish I had, you know, been brave enough to venture into that and to um, learn the applications to this industry, because I always knew in my heart that music was what I loved yeah. and what really fulfilled me. So I think that if I had maybe taken more classes in that vein, it would have helped me um, step into where I'm at now a little bit more quickly. Did the school that you went to, was it known for having music business courses or was it kind of like something small that wasn't very known at the time? Yeah, I think it was small. You know, they had like the business school and the music school and there wasn't a lot of overlap. And so I just didn't think to really look for it. I don't even know if they have it to this day, but I <laughs> wish I would have looked for it. <laughs> when you made the jump to change and go to music, what was going through your mind? And if someone that's listening to this, that they're wanting to make a big jump from a well-known um, degree to doing something that they love, what would you tell them? So I received this advice and um, it really helped me. So I think it's the perfect advice to pass on. A lot of times when people are looking to make a career change or, or just a life change in general, um, you think about having two cliffs on either side and in the middle, there's a huge chasm. And a lot of people, they're like, okay, I'm on this side of the cliff. I'm just gonna leap off and I'm gonna try to make it and jump over. And then, you know, they, they might fail or they might, they might not, but more frequently, it's not as easy as they expect. So the reality is that on the side of the cliff you're standing on, there's actually a huge pile of boulders and rocks. And it's our job to one at a time, push those into the chasm until they fill it up. And then you can just simply walk over from one side to the next. So that was kind of my approach of, you know, and, and just my philosophy of, you know, I'm not going to just do this by, you know, taking a complete leap of faith. That's not very strategic. Like I'm going to be thoughtful and strategic about this and, um, you know, take steps one at a time to get to where I am. And, you know, now I'm living in LA and my producers here. And, you know, I, I really feel like that's a result of just small, consistent efforts to make it happen. So don't overwhelm yourself, you know, take it, be, be smart, but um, it's 
totally doable. It, it really is. You just have to take the time. Was the big goal to end up in LA? Cause that's a big music place. I mean, <laughs> people, when they think of music, it's always Tennessee, Nashville, Memphis, but LA has a big music scene also. Was that your big goal that you were wanting? It actually was not. It's funny you <laughs> ask because um, when I was growing up, um, I remember my mom sitting, my sister and I down, I, I sang a lot with my sister as well. And, and my mom was like, hey, if you guys want to do this, like, do you want to go audition? And like, potentially we could think about going to LA. And, and we were like, no, we don't want to be on Disney. Like, I, it just <laughs> didn't seem practical, whatever. Um, and so like from that point, I just kind of wrote off LA and I wrote off California. I thought it's way too expensive. Like you just hear a lot of craziness about Los Angeles and, you know, well-deserved sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I actually started working with my producer virtually over the pandemic. Um, and then like, I don't even know how it happened, but just like step by step, it just started to make sense. Like, I just felt like, wow, I need to be in LA. And I never pictured myself here because I thought it's impractical. But, yep. you know, once I started really working on my music and, and really being excited about it and starting to understand the industry and how, um, you know, there is a lot to be said for living in a location where there is a good network to learn from. Um, it just was the right next step. So yeah, it, it's interesting. Your life will definitely take you in surprising courses. Talk about creating that first song. You're making that big jump and now you're all in on this opportunity. Talk about creating it. And what was the vision behind the song? Yeah, so my, uh, my first single, my debut single, Fool for the Pain, um, it was really fun because we started working on it over the pandemic. So it started out very, you know, very much a virtual thing. Um, and it's funny, I actually was talking about this on my Instagram live with my producer um, just the other week. I, I sometimes go live with him. Um, so we were going back and forth and I, I had this voice memo and I, I kind of sent it to him and it was just the first lyrics, which are hat on, eyes down and a little bit of blood on her blue nightgown. And I just had this like mood and image in my head. And he was like, we've got to work on that. Like, we've got to get it right. Um, so, so then it was kind of a iterative process of writing and, and I do co-write with my producer. So typically, you know, I'll come up with the lyrics and the melodies and then I'll bring it to him and he will really give me good feedback and kind of challenge me to elevate the song and, and just really um, get to kind of the meat of it. So once we did that, you know, we're, we're kind of building the track and the song in tandem. And then I flew out to LA to record final vocals, fell in love, <laughs> and like within six months was here, living here, you know, full time. So um, it was it was really exciting and just gratifying to finally hear like the quality of music that I had just been striving for and to be like, I'm proud of this. I'm going to put this out. I got the chance to listen to it and let's just say it's addicting to listen to. <laughs> um, Thank you. Oh. It, it was like, and I saw the lyric video and, or the video that you made for it. And it's just, uh -huh. I'm trying, I kept like watching it multiple times. I'm like, I'm trying to understand what's the background about the song. I'm thinking it's gotta be something either with a, a relationship or a friendship or oh yeah something and like you could you can take so many songs and this is for any singer and people will get so many different ideas of what's behind the mind of the lyrics and what's going on but I will say it is a very good song and everyone that's listening definitely needs to go check it out because you can tell your passion is behind that song but Oh, talk, thank you. talk about what is the concept of it? Because I'm curious yeah. now, what <laughs> is it a personal experience? Cause you just said you co-wrote it. So is it from your producer's vision or your vision? Uh -huh. Right. Yeah, no, I love this question. It's such a fun one. And thank you again. I'm so glad you felt like that emotion and depth. Cause that's what we were going for. Um, so th thank you for, for that. But 
yeah, really, um, you know, when I'm writing, I, I get inspiration from a lot of different things. Frankly, every line might have a different inspiration. Um, it, it might come from my personal experience. It might come from a, fa a family member or a friend. Um, it might come from a book. In fact, um, this song, I originally wanted to have the, the hook be something about the things they carry. Because um, when I was in like 10th grade, we read that book, The Things They Carried. Have you heard of this book? I have not. Um, I'm probably going to butcher this, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure it's about the Vietnam War. And like, I had to write a paper on this book. And it was about like the things that we carry in life. And um, I had a family member that went through a pretty pretty dramatic and abusive, sadly, situation. Um, and I remember writing this paper about her experience and about the things she then had to carry. And this, this idea has been floating around in my head for a long time. So, you know, one of the things that I really was, was striving for in writing this song was we all carry these heavy things. We all get into situations that maybe aren't healthy and we have, you know, trauma and and issues and life throws stuff at us and we carry these things that people don't have a clue like they, they don't see it and so you know that was one of the many inspirations um we ended up obviously going with school for the pain instead of the things they carried but um i love all different forms of art and and entertainment and communication and expression and so sometimes it's, it's just like a book or a story that I've been holding on to for a long time so I was definitely way off with that yeah. uh, not even but it just shows like we all can have like different viewpoints on uh, the story but it kind of going from those first few lines that you mentioned it kind of makes sense on with the blood on the night down and kind of what that the kind of the relate or the the story that that family member or the friend was going through. So it kind of now when I go back to the song, I can kind of, okay, now I know what she was envisioning and could put it all together. Yeah, yeah. And, and I like that it's open because frankly, like the blood on the nightgown could mean so many a lot things. of different things, a lot of different things. And so I love that the listener can hear that and they can think about their situation. Because I want them thinking about their life, not mine or not the book I read or not whatever. Yeah. <laughs> when you created that video, was that kind of a, was it during the pandemic, obviously, that you couldn't really go so big with things, but you were also just starting. So it was definitely a financial burden if you yeah. went big with it. It was, a, it was a little bit of both, you know, obviously as a new artist, I'm learning how to kind of scale and, and you know, what can I do that is um, creative and scrappy and fun, but also really engaging and cool. And so that was, um, it was actually really windy that night that we were filming on the um, parking garage in the city with the backdrop, if you, you've seen that scene. So yeah. um, <laughs> there's a lot of really good outtakes on that video. Um, but I loved just kind of the, the mood and the energy that came from it and just um, how it, you know, visually really depicted some of the, the musical themes. I, I mean, you were dancing around barefooted on top of the parking. <laughs> I'm like, if my luck, I would be stepping on something. But... Oh my gosh, I know. I should have got a tetanus shot before doing that. <laughs> In fact, my brother, he, um, he has this saying of 7-Eleven feet. He's like, <laughs> if you walk around barefoot in a 7-Eleven and you're, you know, your feet get all black, that's what 7-Eleven feet oh. are. And I definitely, after that, like I had to go wash my feet because <laughs> it was, it was not good. I was barefoot, like in so many public city spaces in downtown LA. So yeah, probably not smart to do during a pandemic. <laughs> Some of your posts have been talking about that song. What kind of reactions have you been getting from your fans that are listening to the song? I've gotten so many nice reactions. I love DMing and just interacting with my fans and just kind of, you know, actually before I even put the song out, I, I sent some clips to some fans and was like, what do you think? Like, you know, tell me your thoughts. And so that was really fun initially for them to be like, oh my gosh, like when is this coming out? We're so excited. 
Um, and then after I put it out, I had some really cool fans. In fact, one, um, he like went to this winery and sent me a video where he had like asked the staff to play the song over the loudspeakers. And he's like, hey, I got your song on at this winery. I was like, that's so nice. I've never really met him in person or anything like that. But um, I think that speaks to the music and, and the connection and the hopefully quality of it, you know, that people want to blast it out. And that's like just the best feeling. When you hear those reactions and your fans telling you about the song that you just wrote, do you feel that you made the right decision in going in this direction because you're following your dreams, following that passion that you have, and you're enjoying the experience you're going through? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, something I always say, and I have to tell myself this anytime I put something out, whether it's on my TikTok or a song, you know, it's a little bit scary. Like you have to yep. really put yourself out there. And I just tell myself, if this touches one person's heart, it will all have been worth it. And I'm really looking for like those one on one connections. So, like, if just one person can hear this, like, I've done something right. And, I can be proud of that. And, you know, I don't need to be, you know, seeking crazy amounts of, you know, attention or whatever, but just, you know, it's, it's really about that one-to-one -one connection for me. You're just what you just said hit me pretty well because I did my first interview, me actually getting an interview and telling my story. And I told myself, and I even told my family, um, my story is about being a type one diabetic is if I could help one parent yeah. or one individual with diabetes, I did what I needed to do because someone that can relate or appreciates me being open and honest, it's similar to what you're going through, where if you're putting yourself out there with the songs and sharing your passion and taking that one fan to make a big impact to me, it's so rewarding because I don't need that. I mean, I would love thousands of people to <laughs> appreciate it, Yeah, but, but it's like, it's so meaning. Me, the meaning is there when it's that one person that you just now build on what they're talking to you about. So it's very yeah. rewarding that what you're experiencing, because I'm going through the same thing now. No, that, that's so cool. And actually um, my husband has type one. So oh. I completely feel you on that. Like there is, <laughs> I've learned so much about it over the years and, you know, it definitely is something um, that, you know, people should be talking about and, and it's important to have those support networks and, and to have people who understand and, and to be able to share that like you're doing is so cool. So um, that, that's really exciting. How has he been during this process with your career? Has he been that big cheerleader for you and been behind you no matter what you want to do with your career? Oh my gosh. He has been the biggest support. Honestly, like I, I tell him this, like, I don't know if I would have gone after this if it weren't for him. Um, on our first anniversary, actually, he got me this painting. Um, and it's, I, I'm, you know, a very spiritual, faithful person. So it's a, a painting of a little girl sitting on Christ's lap, you know, and um, it's, it's a Christian painting and they're holding a candle together. And my husband gave me this and he was like, I want you to like share your candle and share your light. And, and that was when I kind of was like, okay, like I'm going to do this. And, and I bought some like recording equipment and I, you know, started to really go down that path. And so I, to this day, like, I, I don't know if I would be here and have a song out if it weren't for his support. So I am really, really blessed to have that. That's awesome to hear. And that means he definitely cares so much because happy wife, happy life. <laughs> oh yeah. Right. Yeah. That is a saying for a reason. And, um, and yeah, I mean, here we are in LA, like he moved here with me completely because of, you know, my stuff. So um, definitely I am very, very grateful. How many songs do you have in the pipeline coming up? Are you always like, anytime you have like a mo like lyrics in your mind, you're like writing it down as quickly because you <laughs> don't want to forget. What's in the yeah. future with that? Are you working on an EP, an album, something like that? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's funny you mentioned that because last night <laughs> I woke up at 4 a.m. 
and I pulled out my phone and started singing into a voice memo because I had a song idea and I woke my husband up and I felt <laughs> and it's just like probably the worst voice memo I've ever recorded but you know I, I get these ideas and I've got to like capture them um but right now I'm actually releasing a lot coming up this year um I have a single coming up um called happy again that will be releasing soon and then after that I have a couple more singles in the pipeline that will all roll into an EP so um that's kind of like the the what's next um and I've been you know in the studio and writing and just with my producer and I am so excited to share more because I really you know if if you like Full for the Pain, I'm so excited for you to hear, you know, this other stuff that, that's a little bit different sonically or, or just kind of ventures into these other topics or journeys and um, really excited to share that. A fun question I ask anytime I have musicians, artists is what's that dream collab you would want to do? Mm, that's a good one. Um, I think Julia Michaels would be really cool because she is an incredible songwriter. I love her voice. She's an amazing singer and performer. And just like, she has that like rawness and that vulnerableness that I just really resonate with. So I think that would be a really, really cool collab, but there's so many talented artists and people out there that um, I, I really could talk about this all day. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a dream stage, like a performance, an event that you would want yes. to do? I'm so glad you asked. You're asking the best questions. I've, they're <laughs> all things I've been thinking about. Um, I want to perform at Red Rocks Amphitheater and I, it's going to happen. It's, you know, I'm putting that out into the universe. It's going to happen. But um, growing up around the Denver area, Red Rocks Amphitheater, if, if you haven't seen it, if, you know, if you're listening to this and you've never looked it up, go look it up. It is incredible. You've got the red rocks. You can see Denver in the background. You've got the stars. That's my dream venue. I've seen so many photos and I just think it's so spectacular. Like you got everyone sitting, going upwards, the mountains, the landscape, the skyline, yeah. everything. It's like, who wouldn't want to perform there? Like, Oh, and it's incredible. And when, you know, even the acoustics, when you have the stereo kind of booming off of those rocks and everybody's just like in it together, it's so connecting and so beautiful. So you, you need to go to a concert there too. Like, don't just look up a picture, but go oh, I, experience yeah. it. <laughs> well, and it's interesting, especially it being in Colorado and their mm -hmm. weather is, I mean, you never know what's going to happen. That kind of setting would fit in like a Florida or California with nice weather. But I think that makes Colorado so unique is they have something like that, that people come for and people drive the distance to go listen to performers there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I remember having crazy blizzards when I was growing up, but also I remember having a snow day and then later in the afternoon, it would warm up and it's like, what's going on? <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah, it's definitely unique for the region. You also are a model. How did you get involved in doing that? And do you kind of look at it as a way to brand yourself and both of your passions? Yeah, absolutely. When I actually first got into modeling, it was because of music and because I wanted to learn how to brand myself better, you know, how to present better. Uh, modeling really is kind of like a form of performing and yep. acting and, and just learning how to, you know, communicate with your body and with your face and all of these things. And so um, I, I started to learn that, but then once I got involved, I saw just the creative process and it really pulled me in. You know, you meet amazing people, you get to work with amazing brands and talented creatives. And I love seeing, you know, something go from a concept and a vision to then fully executing it into like a final deliverable. So modeling has been a really fun way to do that. Um, and it's, it's led me to some cool opportunities, you know, here in LA and being able to go to you know, a Dior pop-up event because of these things and, and being able to share that with people on my Instagram and just, um, you know, bring people behind the scenes. That, that's really fun for me as well. 
So you took a photo today. If anyone's looking at the day of this interview that we're taping, you posted, because I follow uh, your, the PR agency, that you posted a photo of you looking like you're in a jungle. But the quote, yes. was that from a modeling or was that just a fun picture you just took uh, someday? Uh, that was from a swimsuit uh, shoot. It's Albion Fit and they're, you know, they do swimwear and, and they have some other things. So um, that that was actually really fun. And it actually was shot in kind of a green room pool house. So it wasn't okay. even like a very tropical place, but it was staged in a tropical way. Um, so yeah, I definitely had fun at that shoot. And um, it's a jungle out there, you know, that captions a reference to just living in LA and yeah. <laughs> with the city, you know, it really is a jungle out here. <laughs> what we do with all of our guests is we talk about that future and you mentioned some of the things in your future for your professional life, but is there anything personally that you're hoping to accomplish in the next few years? That's a really good one. Um, you know, I think for me, uh, you know, getting kind of personal and raw, I guess myself, um, you know, during the pandemic, I really started to experience some anxiety that um, I just had never dealt with before. And so, you know, that's led me to being in therapy and really working on just my mental health and healing. And so I, I think for me, like I have seen myself growing so much through therapy and, and through all of those things. And so personally, you know, I just want to continue to um, improve my own, you know, space and learning how to have a healthy mindset with things, but also just um, sharing with people that, you know, it's normal and and they're not alone and that, you know, we're all kind of dealing with our own stuff and that's, that's life. So I would say personally is just to, you know, continue down that path and, and really flourish um, personally. Was it hard to be open about that and kind of with you being a kind of a public figure in a way where you're putting yourself out there, you're showcasing your career that we all, and it goes back to what we do on this show is everyone has a story. Sometimes people share it. Some people don't share it. And I think it's so valuable that when people are open and honest and raw about the certain things that they're going through, so many people can relate and connect and maybe that one instant that that guest says they connect and it kind of makes them want to maybe go down a, the path of therapy or being so open about mental health. Was that kind of something you were going through or what was it for you? Yeah. So when I first kind of shared that, you know, I, I was going through this struggle and, and working on it, you know, I did have some family members and friends who were just like really surprised and um, I, I think it was really healthy to kind of open that conversation, you know, in my family, not that I know of, you know, my, no one in my family that I know of, like has gone to therapy. And I mm -hmm. feel like I I'm kind of the first one to do that. And now I recommend it all to my sisters and my family. I'm like, it's so good. Like, even if you're not having anxiety or panic attacks, like it's really helpful. And so um, I think it just definitely opened kind of that that conversation and um, just kind of normalizing that it's, it's okay and it's healthy to talk to somebody about things. Um, and now I, you know, I have another single coming out after Happy Again. I, I can't really give you too much details, but um, <laughs> it does, it, I do kind of talk a little bit more about some of my, you know, mental health struggles. And I really hope that that song will be um, very healing for people. Well, everyone that's listening is going to be very interested and, and excited to hear your story and especially through that song. The final question yeah. I'll ask you, for someone that's listening to this interview based on your journey and experience, what tips or advice would you give them to overcome obstacles, accomplish their goals, and rise to the challenge? Mm -hmm. I think number one is learning how to be in tune with yourself you know yourself better than anybody else or you at least have the opportunity to get to know yourself better than anyone else and so learning how to tap into who you really are and and learning to um, be aware of your own needs and boundaries and just um and just creating the space that you need to 
heal or to face things, you know, like you, you know what you need to do. I really feel like a lot of people have the tools within themselves. And so I'd say, you know, trust your instincts, do the hard work, you know, be intentional, be aware. And you got this, you know, it's, it's like you, you can do it. You just have to take the time to really, you know, make it a priority. Well, Kel, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about your rise to the challenge. You're inspiring so many people and we're excited to see what the future looks like for you. Thank you so much. It was so lovely talking to you. And, um, you know, to anyone listening, please DM me, tweet me. I, I want to say hi and get to know you and let me know that uh, you came from Rise to the Challenge and we'll, we'll connect. So thanks again for having me.